Welcome everybody to episode 110 of the Startup Show. Today I'm here with the CEO and co-founder of MeTP, Julia, and I'm very excited to talk about Consumer Electronics Show from Las Vegas, where you just came back from, about consumer products and MeTP and entrepreneurship. Make sure to stay tuned for the rest of the video. Welcome everybody back to a new episode of The Startup Show. We are already up to episode 110 of season two and I'm very excited to be here today at the Technopark talking to the CEO and co-founder of MeTP. Julia, welcome to The Startup Show. Thank you very much, Cedric, for the introduction. So my name is uh, Julian. I was born in Winterthur and raised there. I have worked uh, abroad two years in Ireland, two years in China, so got a little bit of international experience. And at some point I wanted to do a startup and Actually, in the past uh, year and a half, I started the project and we are running now. We have four co-founders and we are running the project fully since like last April, so about nine, nine ten months. So, so tell me, before we go more into, let's say, what your company does, I always like to get a little bit of an understanding who the person is right here. Sure. So you, you, have, uh, you were exposed to entrepreneurship already for a while. I saw uh, on LinkedIn you were also, let's say, uh, one of the co-founders of the Entrepreneur Club at your university. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit of, like, let's say, what kind of startups or what kind of like, projects came out of the university or what you experienced during those time uh, while you co-founded this entrepreneurship club here in a, in a Swiss university. We created the Entrepreneurs Club just about one and a half years ago because there was a need for this university to connect to people. You know, one thing in entrepreneurship is always uh, you need to have relationships to, to, to move forward. And it's very difficult as a student, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, to get started. You know, where do you start? Uh, who can you talk to? We just saw the need that at the university, there are other universities who are running these clubs already, ETH and others. And so there was a specific need for it. And obviously for us, it was also a good opportunity to connect to students, but also to, to experts and facilitate different events. So last October, we ran a very big event. We had over 800 people attending to our startup night in Winterthur. Mm -hmm. It was very successful and we're looking uh, forward to do okay. more events and we received a lot of positive feedback. So it's really about connecting people and yeah. connecting knowledge. Absolutely. I mean, like I see it also, probably the network effect um, within uh, your company and also outside is probably one of the most important uh, factors for the success of a startup. Before we go into MeTP and your first product, Kevin, I would like to hear your impressions. You just came back from uh, CES in Las Vegas. Uh, one of my dreams to one day go there. It hasn't happened yet, hopefully one day, but maybe you can give us people who are, you know, maybe in Switzerland or around the world and haven't made it yet to Las Vegas, a little bit of an impression what you experienced there. Actually, honestly, I didn't see a lot of, of uh, <laughs> CES because, I mean, we were kind of stuck in our booth. But uh, I just can say, I mean, even just the startup area, it's huge. I mean, it's huge. And, and I mean, we haven't even talked about the big companies yet. I mean, really, uh, I even heard that a lot of automotive uh, uh, companies have been there this year. It's, it's the biggest consumer electronics show uh, in the world. So it's, it's perfect for us as a startup to go there. You, you get great exposure in terms of media. You, you can connect to potential partners and distributors uh, and sales companies. Even investors, we were able to make connections and to get to know some of them. So for us, uh, especially as an early stage uh, startup, it was really uh, worth it to go there. I mean, we have been at IFA in September, was already good, but CES, uh, again, I mean, was a, was a huge thing and we are already kind of thinking about attending next year again. So it was a great thing for us. Very good. Very interesting to hear. So let's get a little bit into uh, MeTP and like what Kevin is is all about. Maybe you can give us a little bit of an in, um, explanation of what what what, you, what what we see here in front of us. Right. So uh, Kevin is uh, basically the product of uh, of research. Uh, so we have worked with an insurance company and developed this whole uh, product. And we figured out, I mean, you basically have three big risks at home and there's fire, water and, and burglary. And the thing which is really emotional attached to people is burglary. And then we started actually the research and found out, you know, the biggest challenge uh, for burglary victims is that their privacy has been infringed. So if they experience a burglary, they don't feel as 
safe as before anymore and it really impacts their life. Some, some even have difficulties to, to sleep afterwards, they don't feel safe at home, etc. And, th- and then we actually looked at what's there in the market and you see a lot of uh, solutions which are basically telling you a burglary is inside now, which doesn't solve the problem because your privacy has already been infringed. So that's why we came up with the product Kevin. The purpose of it is your virtual roommate, he lives there while you're, you're not. Why did we come up with Kevin? Because the biggest risk for burglars actually is confrontation with people. So they look for empty houses and empty apartments. You always he- hear the extreme stories like, you know, I was asleep and the burglar came uh, into the room, but that's actually, in reality, that's the very exception. Because the biggest risk for them is, is the confrontation because that's the moment where they can get caught or get into fights and they, they want to avoid that. We have even validated that by even talking to burglars. So we did that. It was actually a lot of uh, effort to get access to burglars. <laughs> Uh, was not that easy, but we did that to, to verify that. In, on top, we also did a lot of research, uh, task research, and even talking to our experts. Yes. And that's why we came up with Kevin. Uh, he lives in your uh, place. We leverage audio, light, and shadow effects, which the combination is pretty unique. I mean, products have been there before, like uh, smart LED bulbs and stuff like that. You just switch them on when you leave, but it's very static, and then the audio piece is missing. So what happens during lunchtime when the sun is shining, the light doesn't help. So that's where Kevin comes in, where, for example, during lunchtime, we, you would hear from outside like voice conversations or kitchen noise and these kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's say before I see here, I guess that's a prototype. Where do you stand with the development of the, this product? So we plan to ship the product by Q4 2018. Uh, what we have already is a functional prototype. That's what we have just presented at CES, so it's, it's brand new. So we have basic functionalities which are already running. We have already like shadow effects which we can use. We have certain uh, audio patterns and we already have like the electronic board developed. But the next step, and as well the industrial design, but the next step is then we need to industrialize that. So get ready for pr- production. So we need to do a little bit of changes here and there. And then sometimes in, in Q4, we start up the production preparation process. Then we also need to do the certifications. You need to do the electronic product. So you need to do C, F, C, C, I, C. So we have to do that. And uh, yeah, plan shipment is in, in Q4. Mm-hmm. So when you look, you know, like the IoT and home space is kind of like very um, big at the moment. Like, do you see yourself you know, integrating this product, let's say, with other um, home devices such as the Nest or, or Logitech also has a couple of devices. Uh, do you see like the, them working together or this would be like more of a standalone solution? Uh, yeah, we're thinking about that definitely. And also we got a lot of feedback that it would be kind of a nice thing to do. But first we will deliver it as a standalone product because one big, big hurdle is user adoption. So we want to make a, a device which is really easy to use, you don't have to configure a lot, and then at the later stage we can still integrate with, with others. It also depends on you know these third-party uh, providers, do they have open interfaces, can we use them or not? So you have then suddenly a lot of dependencies and that's why we decided the product itself needs to work and then it can be extended later. Mm-hmm. I mean, you briefly mentioned about your cooperation with an insurance. Um, is this something that, like, you know, you you are able to, let's say, validate already now uh, whether you can actually reduce uh, the amount of burglaries? And number two, like, is that going to have an effect on how much I have to pay uh, to my insurance if I install your device? So we see a lot of uh, insurance interest, actually. Also at CES, even international companies uh, visited us and even asked for uh, for meetings. Currently, the expectation is there will be special offers, you know, in, in combination with it. Uh, we, we haven't fixed anything yet. We are going to see that. In regards to the question, can we really prevent burglaries? I mean, it's really hard to prove because you obviously... If it doesn't I mean, happen, then... <laughs> people don't run around. But obviously what we did in order to, to validate that is uh, we recorded basically a lot of different scenes from outside and... We showed it to people, they had to s- describe what's going on inside the house. Mm-hmm. And what we figured out is the more uh, variations and movement you have, the more people were explaining that somebody's moving in the house or doing something else. So there are certain steps you, how you can validate it, but of, of course, I mean, 
it's the reality. Uh, we sure. don't have like <laughs> burgers around to test for us. Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, so before I started with season two, I asked off the records a couple of investors what is most important to them uh, when they watch my videos or also during the due diligence yes. process uh, for a startup. And one of the key things is always uh, the team. So my question to you is like, let's say, how do you pick your teammates? Um, do you have like some kind of formula where you say like, well, that kind of like makes our team the A team? Yeah, I think that's actually our core strengths. Even in the past, so I started in, in April where I got like initial funding. Uh, and that was the point that I was putting together the team. I knew from the beginning you need to have a good mix of uh, technical expertise and as well uh, communication and salespeople, right? So I, I have a sales background. I've worked over eight years uh, at IBM for sales. And then we have Laura on the team who came from PwC, communications expert. Then we have Khan, he's the CTO, he studied robotics at EPFL. And we have Jacob who is in the lead of the product design, uh, who actually studied like uh, architecture before and then he went into design thinking. So diversity is really key. And then that's what, what I see as, as our core, core strengths. And we can already see we have an extremely fast pace from Having a paper concept to a functional prototype in about nine months, that's pretty strong. Yeah. Um, and that's also what people tell us. If they uh, observed us like in August or September at IFA and they came back to us at CES, they, they really saw, hey, something is happening here. And I think that's probably the most important key factor to be successful. Mm -hmm. And we are confident. You, um, we're now recording this uh, pre-Kickstarter, and it probably will be published only after. But maybe you can exp elaborate a little bit why you chose, let's say, to go down the road now of, let's say, crowdfunding versus, let's say, the conventional VC funding, yeah. angel funding. So in reality, probably most of crowdfunding projects still have like angel or VC funding in the back because obviously the production uh, process and logistics and uh, etc. Uh, just consumes a lot of capital, and and if you go crowdfunding, you have to deliver. So usually the crowdfunded amount uh, is not enough to do the whole thing. But what it gives you is uh, definitely confirmation. So even as well for the for the investors, right? So we, for example, have a deal with our investor that we get additional funding if we are successful. So yeah. this is kind of a cliff level to go, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the market validates that you are creating something valuable, and. In addition, it, it builds a community for you, and uh, word of mouth is important, especially for the product launch, then later in the market, you'll get a lot of feedback, you'll get a lot of ideas back. Obviously, it also puts you under a lot of pressure because you have to deliver, but especially as a communication tool, it's, it's key. I mean, it's an event that media also can talk about, so in, in many factors, it's, it's actually a good thing to do, but you need to prepare it well. Right. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, for, for the last question for, for this part, I would like to know, you're sitting here at the Technopark, surrounded by other startups. What, what do you see, let's say, uh, when you look at, let's say, the Swiss startup ecosystem? Anything, especially now when you compare it to CES, uh, what do you see here? Is there anything that, like, you know, we are particularly strong in or something that you would say, like, the Swiss ecosystem maybe should uh, work on to become better at? That's a good question. I mean, I was impressed at CES by the French and the Netherlands, actually. Because they come there as, you know, we are French tech, uh, they're a big community, they even rent space together, big brands, even, you know, coming from France is a big brand there. And the Swiss are still kind of, somebody's doing here something and somebody there something. So maybe there the community could be strengthened, but we also have to see that obviously we are a small market. And I mean, we are now in tech products, so not so many companies are actually developing like co consumer electronics. So other markets are probably uh, stronger in that. But on the other hand, the quality of the startups in Switzerland are, are quite good. Mm -hmm. So there are success stories, uh, even on Kickstarter, they have been very successful companies. And so I would say by the number of tries, we are in Switzerland, we are pretty successful. So the rate is pretty good. Someone um, asked, unfortunately, sometimes people say they want to stay anonymous. So I don't know why, but that's how it is. Yeah. Um, I got the question through WhatsApp. And the question is um, also actually very interesting. Uh, if you can give us some insights into the name of MeTP and how you came up with Kevin. Should be sure. fine for you to answer. Yeah, so. yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so actually, the name uh, MeTP was, uh, was kind of a strange exercise because I saw the you know, name of the company not important at all. And then 
I was working with different people together before I put together this team uh, in the ideation process. And then we had a big fight basically over the name because it, people have to identify themselves with, yeah. with, with the name. And then we went from Swiss TP. So TP was always there because it's an alternative to kind of a home thing, TP, yeah. you know. And the, the home name is just so overused, so that's why we decided to go for TP. And then in the beginning it was like Swiss TP, and then we came up with Fox TP, which is kind of the smart guy in your home. And then we had a big conflict. I mean, is Fox really good or not? And then in the end of the day, we came up with me TP, which is kind of uh, it's my TP, me's TP, you know, also yes. from Swiss, Swiss German. German. Exactly. And then Kevin actually... At IFA, we were still there with the product called the MeTP. And then a lot of people came to us and basically said, oh, the product works like a Kevin in Home Alone, you know? Yeah. He does the thing. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, we said, okay, why not? Uh, let's, call, let's call him Kevin, uh, because people understand very quickly what the product does. And okay, cool. What it so is the about. association so works, to the yeah. famous Hollywood movie. Yeah. So first one is, you have to finish the sentence. My biggest mistake as a startup is? Neglecting the importance of personal identity to names and vision. What's your best tip to get an investor? Have a strong team, have a clear vision, a mission. Just, just try to talk to many investors as possible to also get feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, how did you get your first paying client, if you have one? I don't know. Uh, actually... <laughs> In the development process, very early, we just did a prototype with smart bulbs and stuff. So we just went to a company's fair and we said, you can pre-order the product now. We'll ship it somewhere later for whatever uh, price. And that's how we tested it. And we got first 20 pre-orders at that event and we basically had nothing. <laughs> nothing. Okay, that's good to know. So you can actually sell something you don't even have yet. Yeah. Most important characteristic in a team member? Ability to receive feedback and uh, and most important uh, commitment for for the mission and, and the team. And um, what messaging platform does your team use to communicate efficiently? Uh, WhatsApp, Slack. WhatsApp. Okay, cool. Me too. I also only use WhatsApp. That's cool. And Slack. So we use Slack, especially for collaborating with our team and external teams together. Now is your time where you can show off your expertise in an area where you feel like you are the expert. So maybe if you have like something that you would share with the future um, generation of entrepreneurs, that you would say like, this is one advice I can give you coming from the heart. <laughs> yeah, so the, that's an advice and it was kind of confirmed in the, in the last uh, few months. Go out with the product as, as early as possible and talk to people try to sell it or try to promote it, even talk to media uh, in a very early stage. I mean, we, we have been, uh, we had articles in Blick where we didn't have even like a working product yet. So because then you already get a lot of feedback and confirmation or not a confirmation that the product is interesting or not. So, so go out with the idea as soon as possible mm -hmm. and test it. And then maybe you need to adapt, maybe you're on the right track. You'll find out. Okay, good. I guess a very, very good statement to finish up this episode. So make sure to just try it, give it a try, ask feedback and get started. So thank you very much uh, for you. Thank you for coming and being uh, on the show. Thank you very much, everybody who stayed all the way till the end of this video. Thank you very much for tuning in today and have a great day. Hi, my name is Mark Abele. I'm the CEO of 10 Technologies. And make sure you tune in next Monday to the show and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. <laughs>